Hello and welcome to lesson two, find real and imaginary solutions. In the past you practiced solving quadratics to find solutions, but now we are going to factor and then take those factors to help us find solutions. And not just real solutions, we'll also be looking at imaginary solutions. So our objective is to find polynomials, to find real and complex solutions. Let's look at our first example. Here we have a quartic, and we know that it's a quartic because we have an x squared term here and an x squared term here. If you multiply those together, we're in effect we have four x's, so we have x to the fourth. So we know it's a quartic. But what we're going to do is we're going to solve this. This is in factored form already. We're very close to factored form. We're going to solve these factors to find our real and or imaginary solutions. So the first thing that we do is we make sure our equation is set equal to zero. Remember that our solutions are really the x-intercepts, and y is always zero on the x-intercept, on the x-axis, I should say. So we're going to take each of these factors, x squared minus 1 and x squared plus 4, and we're going to solve. So if we look at x squared minus 1, we would take that term by itself, set it equal to zero. Then we would take the x squared minus 4 plus 4 and set that equal to zero. So we're going to solve each of these x terms. Now, some of you have, may have already looked at this x squared minus 1, and in your mind you might have said, hey, that's a difference of squares. Because we can take the square root of x squared, we can also take the square root of 1, and we could get two factors out of this. Now we could do that, but right now I'm just going to solve what we have here, because we can do it a different way. So in order to solve for x, we would need to add 1 to both sides, and we would end up with x squared equal to 1. So how do we solve x when x is being squared? How do we undo the square? Hopefully you're thinking, well, we just take the square root. So if we take the square root of x squared, we are left with just x. But ha what happens when we take the square root of 1? Remember that when we take the square root of something, we have learned that we actually get two values. We get a plus 1 and we get a minus 1. So that's two solutions. And think about this. This is a quartic. How many solutions should we have? And the answer should be 4. We should have the same number of solutions as the number of x's we have. And we have 4 x's, so we should have 4 solutions. So here we have 2. If we were to graph this on a graph, and we'll do a quick graph right here, we would have an x-intercept at positive 1. We'll assume this is positive 1 right here. And we would have an x-intercept so far at negative 1 right here. So there's 2. But now we need 2 more. Well, if I look at this next equation, we would do the exact same thing to solve it. We would go ahead and move 4 to the other side. So we would subtract 4. And we would get x squared is equal to negative 4. And how do we solve when we have x squared? How do we turn this into x? Again, take the square root. And we know that the square root of x squared is just x. But, and we know we have plus and minus, but what is the square root of negative 4? You can't say negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 is not negative 4. It's positive. We can't say positive 2 because positive 2 times positive 2 is positive 4. We need negative. Well, anytime we have a negative inside the radical, as you learned in the previous lesson, that comes out as just i. So what we have is a plus or a minus, i, and then we still have the square root of 4 that we know how to take. So remember, anytime we have a negative inside the radical, that's the same thing as i. It's considered an imaginary number. And if you think about this plane, that means that our imaginary numbers are somewhere else on a different plane. We call them imaginary numbers, but we also call them complex numbers because they're not really imaginary. It's a way to represent the square root of a negative number. So now we can continue on because we can take the square root of 4 and we know the square root of 4 is 2. So what we really have is x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2 and I'll just write the i behind the 2. And now we have two more solutions. 
These are x-intercepts, however, they are not real, so they would not be displayed on the x-axis, they would be displayed somewhere else, like over here and over here, for example. All right, let's move on to another example. Example two. In example two, now this is where you have to start being creative. You have to start using your skills. This is not factored for us, so we need to factor it. But in order to factor it, we need to set it equal to zero, and we have six x cubed on the wrong side. So we need to move it to the other side. So we're going to subtract it from this side and then subtract it from the left side to move it over. So our new equation that we're working with is 3x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 12x squared. Now it equals zero. So what do I do? This looks like a quadratic but it's not because it's to the fourth, so it's a quartic. So I can't factor by grouping, but remember that your first step always when you're factoring is look for a GCF. If you can pull out a GCF, you can simplify it enough sometimes to factor it. So when I look, three, six, and 12, it looks like a three can go into all those. That's the biggest number that can go into all those. Now I look at my X's. I have four, three, and two. Well, I could definitely then pull out two. So what do I have left? Remember that to figure out what you have left, it's the same thing as taking each of these terms and dividing it by your GCF. That's one way to do it. Or you can write out each term, circle your GCF, and see what you have left. So on the first term, the threes cancel. If I take two x's out of four, I'm left with just two x's left. In the second one, three goes into six two times. And then I can take two x's out of three, and I'm left with just one. So in this case, I have minus. I'm pulling the sign, minus two x. And in my last case, three goes into 12 four times. So I'm going to put a four here. x squared divided by x squared is one. And we don't need to put one, because four times one would still be four. So now I have a new equation. And I do, in fact, have a quadratic. So based on this quadratic, I can now factor by grouping. So I'm going to take the 1 in front of the x squared times the 4. That goes up here. Remember, it's the two outer terms multiplied. And then down below, I take the middle term, which is negative 2. So what times what is positive 4 that when you add together, you get negative 2? Notice there's nothing, right? 4 and 1 would only give me 3. 2 and 2 will give me 4. I can't do this, so grouping is not going to work. And any time that you notice grouping isn't going to work, then you know the only thing else you can do is either complete the square or use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is very simple, so let's actually use the quadratic formula. That will get us our solutions right away without having to solve like we did the last time. So let's review the quadratic formula. We need a, b, and c, right? Because the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, the whole thing divided by 2 times a. So let's identify our a, b, and c in this. Well, our a is our coefficient of our x squared term, which is just positive 1. Our b is our coefficient of our x term, which we need to pull the sign, is negative 2. And our C is just our constant term, which is 4. So let's go ahead and fill in our quadratic formula. And this is where some people tend to get confused. We have negative B. So I'm putting the negative. What's B? B is already negative. So put negative 2. So I have a double negative here, which makes it be positive. So I'm going to continue to fill this out. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared. So I'm going to square negative 2 minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 4, all divided by 2 times 1. Okay, what I'm going to do now is simplify this. So I'm going to simplify what's in my radical. Well, we already said a negative and a negative is a positive 2, so I'm going to write that. And then when you're solving inside the radical, remember do this first number first. So we would square negative 2 and get positive 4. And then what I do is I look at all three of these numbers. 
So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. All divided by 2. Okay. Now here you can see we are going to get a negative number inside the radical, negative 12. And that's because 4 minus 16 is negative 12. So now we need to use some of our skills that we learned in the first lesson. We need to simplify this radical. I can't merely just take the square root of 12 because I'll get a decimal and I don't want that. I want to write my answer exactly. So I want to write it as a square root and pull any squares out. Well, remember that 12 can be broken down. So let's break down 12, just like we did in the past. It's 2 times 6, but 6 can be broken down into 2 times 3. And then I can rewrite this as 2 squared times 3. Well, I can take the square root of 2 squared, and that would just get me 2, and then the 3 is what's left inside the radical. So that's how negative 12 is simplified. All right, let's go ahead and finish this problem. So we have, we'll come over here, we have 2 plus or minus, remember how the negative comes out, that comes out as an i, and then we simplified the 12 to get 2 root 3 all divided by 2. Now here's what we have. We have three terms. We have a 2, we have an i times 2 times root 3, and then we have a 2. What we can do is we can simplify it a little bit more by dividing the 2 into each of these two terms. So we can take 2 into 2 and get 1. It goes in once. We can also take this 2 into this 2 and it goes once. So rewriting that, I end up with 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3, and it's over 1, so I can put it over 1, or I could have just left it. And that's how we simplify this radical, as well as find our imaginary roots. So let's count our roots. We should have 4. Well, what am I leaving off? I've got 1, 2 here, but then I need to have 2 from this 3x squared. So what I didn't do yet was to set the 3x squared equal to 0. So remember that we have 3x squared equals 0 that we need to solve for as well. And so it's always a good habit to check your roots, make sure you have 4. So I'm going to divide this by 3. Okay, and then 3 divided by 3 is just 1, or Okay, so we get x squared equals 0. We take the square root of x squared. We get x equals to plus or minus 0, which is just 0. So remember that this is actually two solutions. We have a plus 0 and a minus 0. It's just 0, but it's still counted as two solutions. Two up here. Now we have our four solutions to this quadratic. Two imaginary and two real. Okay, almost done. Let's look at our last example, and then you'll get to try some of this on your own. All right, here we have another. It looks like now we go to the fifth power, so we should have five solutions when it's all said and done. And if you'll notice, this is definitely not equal to zero, so we need to adjust it. So we have x to the fifth on this side. I'm going to move that term over by subtracting it, so we get negative 5x to the fourth. And then I've got plus 4x to the third. Notice that I'm putting these in order. And then I'm going to move that term over by adding it since it's a minus here. So plus 2x cubed equals 0. Now I just need to combine my like terms. And I have two of these x cubed terms. So I'm going to combine the 4 and the 2 to get 6x cubed equals 0. So remember what we said last time, we need to factor out a GCF if there is one. That's always our first step. And if I look here, number-wise, there's nothing to factor out. We have a 1, negative 5, and 6. So the most I could factor is a 1, and that wouldn't do anything. So now I look at my x terms. 
Well, I have five here, four here, three here, so I can take out a maximum of three from every term. If I take three out of this first term, I'm left with two. If I take three out of this next term, I'm just left with one. And if I take three out of this term, I'm left with just the number one. X cubed divided by X cubed is one, and one times will be six. So once again, I have a quadratic, and I would, of course, check to see if I can factor by grouping. That would be the easiest. So I would take the one in front of the X squared times the six, that would go in the top. My middle term is negative five, and then I would ask myself, what times what is positive six that adds to be negative five? Well, I could do negative three times negative two. Those would add to be negative five, and those would multiply to be positive six. So I can factor by grouping, which means I can break apart this middle term. So I know that I have this x cubed term here. I can't forget about it, but I'm going to just work with my quadratic right now. So I have x squared minus 3x minus 2x plus 6 equals 0. And now I can factor by grouping. I have broken apart my middle term, so I'm going to pull out an x and get x minus 3. Here I'm going to actually pull out, since I need it to be minus, I'm going to pull out a minus 2 which leaves me with positive x minus 3. And now I have these two groups, so I can pull out an x minus 3, and I'm left with an x minus 2. Okay, and then don't forget about our x cubed term, which is still here. So how many x's do I have? I have 3 here, 1 here, 1 here, which is 5. Now I'm ready to solve this quadratic. So I'm going to take each of my x terms, set them equal to 0, well, in order to solve an x cubed, instead of taking the square root, I could take the cube root. And that's how you would undo that. But obviously, taking the cube root of 0, taking the square root of 0, anything, is just going to leave us with 0. So three of our solutions are just 0. And then we have, onto our last two, x minus 3 equals 0. So in this case, x is going to be equal to positive 3. And then we have x minus 2 equals 0. Solving for x, x would be equal to positive 2. So in this case, we only have real solutions. Okay, and that concludes our lesson today on finding real and imaginary solutions. So remember your strategies. Always pull out the GCF. See if you can factor by grouping. If you cannot, use the quadratic formula, in which case you'll most likely get an imaginary solution. But remember that when you're using the quadratic formula, you should not plug it into your calculator to get a decimal. If you cannot take the square root of something like 12, make sure you simplify it as you learned in the first lesson.